Hello everybody, this is Dean from Motion Media and today we're going to take a look at um, setting up and using V-Ray RT. Um, this is a great tool that's become uh, more and more part of my workflow and I'm sure part of yours and um, huge time saver. Anybody who's had to light anything or render trial and error over the years uh, will understand really quickly why this is a great uh, advancement here. So let's look at just basic setup. So this is just a regular scene, um, 3D scene with a car, no lights in here, and a camera. Um, so we can do this a few ways. Uh, we can, number one, we want to assign the active shade renderer in this case to be V-Ray RT. Now we can lock it uh, to our camera viewport so that no matter where we activate the viewport it only renders this one which I find helpful. You can also change your viewport uh, to be the active shade render and we'll look at, at, at that too. So uh, I just want to point out one thing. Uh, just notice right now I, I'm set up for HD 1920. When I switch over the first time my uh, settings are not the same. So um, once it lights up here, and like I said, there's no lights in the scene at the moment. So if we go into the um, render setup, we just want to choose HD, and then I'm going to turn the uh, resolution down just a bit so we can work a little faster. Um, I also like to turn off these messages, but that's totally up to you. Uh, the benefit, I think, of having the um, uh, active shade be separate, and let's just reset this. Now it's taking on our new render settings. Uh, the reason why I think this is a little more helpful is that I, even though it's uh, cumbersome a little bit to have this open render window, um, I can actively move around in the camera, and it updates in my render here. Uh, that's pretty helpful. If I close this and I change my viewport over to active shade, uh, this obviously is a less cluttered workspace, but uh, I can't actually navigate the camera from this viewport uh, because it's actually a render instead of the, uh, the active camera, so uh, it's just preference. So I'm going to re configure these and we'll make this camera alright and then just to get my window back I can just hit active shade again <coughs> okay so let's uh, using this uh, let's light the scene um, I have noticed uh, uh, it's wise to uh, save a lot as you use it uh, just to ensure that you don't lose any updates. So let's go to V-Ray Lights here and um, let's first do a plain light just kinda get the overall look. You can see as soon as we draw it in there you can see it. We need to raise it up And you can see the light right there in the render. So we're going to first make it invisible. I don't want to see the light source. And uh, now, really, the rest of it just becomes fun. So I'm going to take this light and rotate it. And, uh, you know, you can immediately see what you're getting, which uh, is obviously a huge time saver. So this has kind of a nice uh, outdoor feel, okay, by just having the one light. If we change this to behind, we get a nice moody look there, but if we rotate this back towards the car, we get a nice backlight effect. Pull this out just a little bit. Uh, you can see we have a lot of reflection right here across the top, and we have some intersection into the wall. Um, now that we can see that in the render, we can easily 
adjust our light source to uh, fix all of that. All right. Could probably make that a little bit shorter and uh, maybe bring it up in the scene a bit. Okay, now you can see you're getting some really interesting reflections. Um, there's two other tricks here I like to use. Um, this is pretty standard practice for photographers, is to place a really hot light, and I'm going to use just a, a simple sphere, but this can this can be uh, much more detailed. We take this light source back here and create kind of a halo effect that helps um, accentuate the, the body lines. So if I position this so it's kind of in the center of the, the curve and then just kind of crank it up till you get a, a level that's interesting. And that's kind of cool. Um, sometimes depending on situation it may not work good here but you can color the light You know, probably something less saturated would be better, but you can see you can get some pretty interesting effects and uh, all moving in real time, uh, which obviously is the, the best part of this. So one other lighting technique uh, that's really useful that you see in a lot of high-end car stuff is putting a, a really high-powered Kino light right in front of the car. So I'm going to make a copy of our our first one, rotate it around. I'm going to bring it pretty close to the surface of the vehicle so I can really judge um, exactly where it's going to be. We're going to make it extend throughout the entire room. And then it needs to be uh, really, really thin. Okay, there you go. You can see we get that that great uh, line all the way through the body and uh, then we're going to want to turn it up quite a bit there you go you see we get that nice uh, nice blowout right across the body and then lastly uh, we can really position it um, again in real time and kind of get this light to follow as much as possible the lines in the car see if we can get that going. There we go. Maybe move it up just a little bit. So we can get it right over there. Oops, lost it. Let's do undo. Uh, that's one of the things I've noticed uh, now that I get to work in more of a real-time fashion is how minute uh, the change is sometimes and that makes it the biggest uh, difference and now that I can see that without re-rendering uh, hundreds of time and wasting literally hours I mean it's just a huge time saver and obviously as we we leave it sit for a second it will further refine and give you an even better impression of what's going on and there you have it uh, that is a quick uh, look at V-Ray RT the setup and a little bit of workflow Thanks, and we'll talk to you soon.